Hey everyone, let's take a look at the Federal Punch 9mm 124 grain JHP. This is defensive ammunition. We previously reviewed this in July of 21 using meat as the test recipient and by all accounts the ammo seemed to do okay. Bone was an element of that review as well. For this round we're going with 10% calibrated gel so we'll definitely have some points of comparisons between these two reviews. Another comparison here is with Federal's own HST product line. When you're looking at the punch and HST standing side by side, they look quite similar. So we're going to dig into that just a little bit. Only so far I can go because I'm not a scientist. There'll be some elements that we just don't know. So we're going to do that, then the test shots, and a follow-up for you. Federal's concept for punch was that most people outside of law enforcement are not seeking out barrier-penetrating ammo, so they focused on a product that needs to provide adequate penetration and expansion for only the bare gel and heavy clothing protocols. As opposed to building punch from the ground up, specs from Federal's law enforcement products such as the HST and Hydroshock D provided the base concept for the design and expansion profile. My understanding of Federal's talking points is that the lead core is softer than products in the law enforcement lineup. Advertised velocity is 1,150 feet per second from a 4-inch barrel. It's probably not a coincidence that Federal's training ammo pictured here also shares the same velocity and felt recoil. Pricing will be noticeably lower than Federal's premium law enforcement lineup. For this review, I'll order direct from the Federal website and pay $22 per box of 20 rounds. In this series of photos, I'm illustrating some of the visual similarities between the 124 grain Federal HST and 124 grain punch. The cartridges are the same length and the bullets from this perspective appear identical including depth and diameter of the hollow point cavities. For the chronograph session, this is a different mix of barrel lengths compared to the first review. Relative to the advertised velocity of 1150 feet per second, the Glock 17 came in a bit warm, which is a good start. Moving to the Glock 19, we are averaging over the advertised, which is from a 4-inch barrel, so we actually have some truth in advertised velocity for a change. Now, looking at the 3-inch barrel Shield Plus and getting a steep drop in this group. Average is just under 94% of advertised. We're losing approximately 40 feet per second for every half inch reduction in barrel length compared to the test barrel. Ready for block shots, this is 10% calibrated gel. Homemade from scratch, recipe is in the description. Has to be tagged at approximately 39 degrees. And if I can get that into focus, we're creeping up right on that. So we have to get these shots underway. Four layers of denim. This is an IWBA testing protocol. It is somewhat dated, but it is stringent. This, this was the protocol back when uh, 9mm was much more robust than it is today. So this, this is where it needs to be as opposed to the FBI protocol. And I get it. A couple layers of cotton is reality, but with today's watered-down ammo and then a, a uh, somewhat of a reduced protocol, that's a little dangerous. So we're going to run this. Five shots, Glock 19, 10 feet, and then a wrap up. I spread it out a little bit better than I have on some reviews that just preceded this one. So a little bit better on shot placement. Let's take a look from the side. So we're coming in just at a glance between 14 and 16 inches. We'll have the exact measurements in just a moment. And also from what I can see through this cloud, these have all expanded really, really well. Just, just what I see right here, this is really good performance. Sliced a bit off the side of the block so we can better see what's going on here. So point of, points of entry and all this disruption, this is where the greatest majority of energy is being dissipated into the block. Here and out here, this is in the 7 to 9 inch range, these are little plugs of denim that were picked up by the hollow point cavity as it expanded, but at least in this case, these were all dispersed off to the side before the final stopping points out here. One more quick view before I dig in and take these out. We're looking at 14 and a quarter to 16 and a quarter, that's the rough estimate. While this isn't a bonded bullet and doesn't feature the same composition as HST, it held together very well. This photo and the next show the 124 grain punch next to a 124 grain HST from an earlier review. 
The expanded petals are very similar, but the visible exposed core is quite different in appearance. Penetration low to high in this group is in the range of my personal preference for defensive handgun ammo in any caliber. The average penetration here was 3.5 inches greater than in the meat test, which did include shots that impacted bone. Expansion was very consistent across the board and just a bit greater than shots from the meat test. I found it interesting that retained weight after the bullets were cleaned was a bit heavier than 124 grains. If you are a fan of the 124 grain HST but don't want to pay nearly twice the cost, Punch could be suitable for your perceived needs. Thanks for watching.